What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, Boomer and I are out in a little bit of a snowfall and it is cold out today. We're doing a cold camp out. It is negative 10 degrees Celsius right now. We just got dumped on six inches of snow last night and it's continuing to snow right now with spotty sunshine here and there. So I have no idea what's gonna happen, if it's gonna snow more or let up. It is supposed to go down to negative 15 to negative 16 degrees Celsius this evening, and the winds are supposed to pick up. So we've got the tent positioned in such a way that the wind is gonna come this way, brushing over top of the door. So later on, I can zip it shut and keep one end open for cooking and doing all kinds of other tasks. The tent that I chose is a bright tent today. Really wanted to pop on the snow and the gray sky. So hopefully it looks beautiful out here with this tent covered in snow. So I've got everything set up right now. Sleeping bag, two sleeping pads. I brought an inflatable with a higher value rated for winter. I also brought a closed cell pad and I put it on top. Now I know this is a hot debate among many people. People say, put it underneath, put it on top. For me personally, putting it on top reflects my body heat directly back at my body. Keeps me very, very warm overnight. Also, it creates a lot of rigidity to the inflatable pad. So it takes a lot of the rock out of the pad. It's almost like laying a sheet of plywood over top, except it's very, very soft. So putting it on top works for me. If putting it underneath works best for you, keep doing it. So everything's ready to go. Boomer's hiding inside of the tent right now, drying off, getting a little warm. And you know what time it is? Hot coffee. So let's get out some cooking gear and cook up a hot drink.
All right, guys, I've got a hot cup of coffee on the go right now, quickly chilling down because it is very cold out. And I gotta say, as soon as that snow stopped and the clouds parted away and the sunshine came out, it almost felt like spring for a moment. It is the 1st of February today, and as soon as those clouds roll back over that sun, I'm telling you, it is quickly winter time all over again. So Boomer is inside of the tent right now. He is trying to get warm up in that sleeping bag. I've got his wet jacket off of him. He's still got his dry sweater on, so he is warming up very quickly. He usually does really, really well in the winter time. I know a lot of viewers often comment about his boots on his feet and other clothing items and things like that and having a sit pad. Dogs really don't need it. They will tell you when they're cold. They will tell you when they're not comfortable, just like he does. As soon as he comes over to me, he'll jump up on my leg and start giving a little bit of a whimper. He's cold and he needs to get inside of the tent. So I'm always looking out for Boomer, always taking note of the signs and the cues that he's giving me. That's why he's inside of the tent right now. Just like birds flying around, when they get cold, they go to their nest. Just like coyotes and wolves, when they get cold, they go to their den. That's his den. So he's gonna warm up and be totally fine. He's been doing this since he was a little, little tiny puppy and realistically he's not that much bigger. But he is now a year old. He's totally used to this and I'm always watching out for him. But I do appreciate the concern from those who are legitimately concerned. He is well taken care of. So I am gonna enjoy my hot coffee. It is getting chilled very quickly and it is quickly approaching nighttime as well. So I chose to bring a cold tent for this camping trip just because it, the simplicity and the experience. It is very simple to come out, set up a tent, whether it's a summer tent, a winter tent, it really doesn't matter. As long as you got a good sleeping bag and a good sleeping pad for me anyways, that's what I find. But I don't have to collect firewood for the wood stove, which is another big reason. And the experience of being out here in winter time, if it's cold, it's winter time, that's what I expect. So why not enjoy a little bit of cold every now and then? So today, cold tent, no firewood for the wood stove. But the reason I'm mentioning that is I may actually collect a little bit of this dead wood, which is all over the place. And here comes Boomer taking a little bit of a stretch coming out to play in the snow. I may collect a little bit of this dead wood and start a tiny campfire, just a little hand warmer off in front of the tent perhaps, just to kind of cozy up to a little later on. If I don't get around to that, I'm not going to be terribly upset because I do have the alcohol stove to cook on and I've got my winter sleep system inside to keep me warm, as well as Boomer. He is a hand warmer in himself. So he's going to wander around here now. He's getting a little curious. He's going to go sniff around. Like I was saying, guys, he knows when he's cold. He knows when he's hot. He knows where he wants to be. Very, very smart dog. So keep a very close eye on him. Enjoy my hot coffee. And we'll probably get around to collecting some firewood and then starting on supper. So cheers, guys. A little bit of a coffee break out here in this winter wonderland.
All right, everybody. So I've collected a little bit of firewood. I've got a fire layer ready to go and a tiny supply of dry twigs. Just enough for some ambience and to warm my gloves, dry out my boots a little bit. That way they don't freeze in the tent overnight. It is now time to start on supper. The sun is going down rather quick. The cold air is starting to set in. The temperature has already dropped four more degrees Celsius. So it's gonna be a frosty evening. I wanna get all this stuff done, cooked and fed. All my food stuff taken care of before dark. That way when it is time to light the fire, I could go and sit right in front of it because it's not gonna burn for very long. Get nice warm and dry and then jump inside of the tent in the sleeping bag and zip it up and get nice and warm. So I'm gonna start on some food prep right now and start cooking with a little bit of light that we have left.
All right, everybody, supper is ready. So Boomer has had a bunch of dog food just moments ago, and he's having his treat right now, which is a meat stick, which is a little bit frozen, but he's working away on it. I brought some pizza bread, and I cooked up some curry ramen with some vegetables in there, which is one of my favorite dishes. And this is looking really, really good. So I'm gonna eat up. The sun is almost on its way down. So I think we're gonna have a beautiful sunset in just a few moments. So I'm gonna hurry up, eat this, enjoy the sunset, and then get that campfire going. And I'm actually really excited to crawl inside the tent later on tonight, zip this door shut, and have some nice, beautiful nightlife inside of the tent with some silence. There's very minimal clouds in the sky behind the camera. This way it looks like there's quite a bit more, so we might actually have a very open sky with stars all over the place. So I don't know what's gonna happen later on tonight, but we're gonna see. So like I said, I'm gonna eat up really quickly, get Boomer the rest of his treat. Here you go, bud. And we're going to enjoy the sunset and campfire. So cheers, guys. Hot dinner. Mmm.
All right, everybody, jumping inside of the tent for the evening. It is definitely colder outside. It hit negative 14 degrees Celsius the last time I checked. Outside with that wind blowing, it feels much colder. So sitting in here with the tent door zipped shut, I do still have the campfire crackling away so I can actually hear it and I can see a slight little glow through the tent, which is actually pretty neat. Uh, there are no clouds in the sky or very little clouds, I should say. So the stars are starting to pop. So I think what I'm gonna do is once I get changed and crawl in my sleeping bag, this particular tent, the door can unzip halfway and there's a toggle to keep it open off the ground. That way I can see the campfire and laying down, I can actually see the stars in the sky. I think that's what I'm gonna do is just kind of lay down, get bundled up, unzip the door, have a beautiful starscape view with the campfire and basically enjoy that until it gets too cold or the fire goes out, then I'll just zip the door shut. So. It is cold, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, Boomer is definitely doing good. He was just out for a pee, so he is a little chilled. I've got the sleeping bag open, so he can crawl inside of there, down in the foot end, and get warm whenever he wants. And that's basically what we're gonna be doing here momentarily. So I'm, I got my boots nice and dry from the campfire. I'm just gonna unzip the sides instead of unlacing them. That way in the morning time, all I have to do is jam my feet in, zip them up, and I'm good to go. Uh, talking about water, Water is starting to slightly freeze. Uh, what I'm gonna do is turn the bottle upside down inside of one of my boots. It'll be fine until morning. When I get up, I'll have water, um, basically ice chunks to make coffee with, I should say. Uh, so the reason why I'm talking about the water is lately on the comment section, there has been all kinds of things popping up on various videos here on my channel. People suggesting putting hot water bottles in sleeping bags. So. I personally do not do that. And the reason for that is my sleep system that I'm using tonight will get me down to negative 20, negative 25 degrees Celsius, no problem. And I will be plenty warm. I'm on a winter insulated pad with a closed cell silver reflectix pad on top of that. And I have a very nice warm down sleeping bag that I've tested down to very cold temperatures. And I'm very comfortable with this. So. What I'm going to be sleeping in is down fill pants and a very thin base layer shirt. That's basically it. I'm going to use my hoodie for a pillow and I'm going to take my jacket and I'm just going to gently drape it over top of everything. That way, if there is any frost coming from my breath, it's not going to form on any of my equipment. That way, everything's nice and dry in the morning. So the reason why I do not use a Nalgene bottle is because if I put a hot water bottle inside of my sleeping bag, I'll break out in a sweat because my sleep system is that dialed in for me that I'm too hot. So those of you who may be benefiting from a hot water bottle in your sleep system, I'm gonna lean more towards your sleep system is not warm enough to keep you warm. Because if you have to add a hot water bottle, it's a no brainer, you're not warm enough. So work on what you put in your body for food before going to bed, a lot of fats, a lot of protein, um, complex carbs to keep you warm during the night, just like feeding a wood stove. You wanna stoke up the stove before you go to sleep. Uh, staying hydrated, I know it sounds a little silly, but cold water can actually keep you warmer by keeping your body hydrated. If you want to have a hot tea or warm up the water, it's also beneficial to do that. But basically sleeping, so, don't bundle up too much. I see a lot of people putting two or three or four pairs of socks on. You're killing the air gap, which dead air space is what keeps you warm. So the dead air space in the sleeping pad, dead air space meaning it's not blowing around, it can't exit the pad. It's closed and it's insulated, so it's gonna warm up. Just like the loft in between the baffles of the down sleeping bag, it's dead air space. The air is not traveling in or out, it's just staying still, it's gonna warm up. That's what you want. So if you're compressing all of your dead air space around your body by layering up too many tight layers, you're actually gonna be really cold. So tonight what I'm gonna do is I have a pair of down insulated pants. I'm gonna throw those on. I have a dry pair of long winter socks. I'm gonna put those on and a long sleeve base layer. That's it. I'm not even gonna sleep in my hoodie. Just a long sleeve base layer and my toque. I'm gonna pull my toque down over my face like that. When I go to sleep, I'll have my sleeping bag hood zipped up around my face. And that's how I go to sleep. And uh, I'm very, very warm. So I don't use a hot water bottle system. I hope that helps some of you guys out. Maybe you guys struggle staying warm or some girls out there struggle staying warm in the wintertime. I would recommend if you have to put a bottle in your sleeping bag, 
get a better sleeping bag or get a better sleeping pad or get a better system of feeding your body before you go to sleep or a better system of what you're wearing because all of that is part of your sleep system not just the gear but also the food how long did you eat before you went to bed? So right now, I actually have some cheese, I have some peanuts, almonds, and I have some peanut butter, and a little bit of beef jerky. I'm gonna put all of that into my body before I go to sleep. That way it's gonna burn slowly, and I will basically wake up in the morning nice and warm. Uh, Boomer is getting a little cold here, so I'm gonna tuck his butt in there. He'll warm up. He's a little stubborn, he wants to come out and play, and he gets a little cold when he's inside of the tent. He wants to play, so I like warming him up before he can kind of bounce around. But as you guys can see, he's doing totally fine. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps everybody out with sleep systems and how to stay warm during winter camping in a cold situation such as this. Um, that's basically all I got. So I'm going to be shutting the camera off and I want to enjoy tonight just lounging inside of the tent. So I'm going to get my boots off, get changed. Boomer is itching for cuddles. He definitely wants to get in the sleeping bag with me. So. I'm going to peace out for tonight and I'll catch up with you guys first thing in the morning for coffee. So good night guys. See you in the morning.
Good morning, everybody. It is a frigid, cold, sunny day out here in the middle of nowheres inside of a bright yellow tent on a non-windy day. Can't really go wrong with that. So last night was pretty uneventful. Uh, everything went really, really well. Boomer was tucked up inside of the sleeping bag like a baby, kind of like he is right now. He's got a whole pad, another pad and a sleeping bag, and he chooses to perch on me like a house cat. So, smart guy, I guess. Uh, so last night, it got cold. It was very, very chilly, and we were very, very warm inside of the sleeping bag. No worries there. Got up this morning, beautiful sun peeking over the horizon. The tent was lit up, which is why I brought this tent, because it was going to be nice and bright. Waking up inside of a tent, having it bright is always nice, rather than being dark and gloomy. Uh, everything went really, really well. So we've already snacked on a few snacks and had somewhat of a breakfast. Working on some hot coffee right now. And I think we're just gonna basically have that and slowly start the pack up process. It's a very simple trip. It's just a tent, the two pads, the bag, and some cooking gear, which is what I love about cold camping. It's just super simple to pack up and set up. So we're gonna kick back and enjoy some coffee. And the sun is almost high in the sky, so I'm kind of hiding in the tent right now so it's not blaring in my face. But I got the whole view right behind the camera wide open, which is really nice. So I'm gonna sip on my morning coffee and still wake up just a little bit more because I am a little tired. Uh, had a movie night last night with Boomer and everything went really well. Looking around the tent, there's not a lot of condensation. It was only built up on the inside of the door of the vestibule. And the other side, of course, is being hit by the sun, and this side is being hit by the sun, so it's already melted. It is still very cold, though. It's negative 10 degrees Celsius right now. So I'm sheltered out of the wind and enjoying a hot coffee. So I'll catch up with you guys in just a moment as soon as that's done. And I imagine Boomer's going to go outside and play. So just wanted to say good morning, everybody, and cheers, hot coffee. All right, guys, jumping inside of the tent just for a moment. The sun is out. It does feel a little bit nice on the face, but it's still cold out there. It's still negative 10, negative 12. Uh, there is a little bit of a wind chill kicking up too, so who knows what the temperature is with the wind. I have no clue. Um, last night, as I was sitting here inside of the tent, I was thinking what I was doing last year at this time. And roughly around this time, I was actually here on Cape Breton Island by myself, and I didn't live here at that time. So it was a total exploration trip. And basically I took my Ram 1500 truck and wood stove in the back and camper build. And I came to the island for seven days and I just did a tour, just, just kind of snowballed it, you know, just kind of hit the trails, hit the truck all over the place. Uh, had a really, really great time. I have a full series on that, by the way, guys, seven days, check out the playlist. Um, all the videos are there. It was such an incredible time. There was a, I remember there was a day that I was waking up with the wood stove and I had my day slayer pants on and I rolled them up to my knees just with a hoodie on and I was walking in the ocean, water up to my knees, drinking my morning coffee. And then like the next day or a day after that, I was up like negative 18 in the mountains with snow and ice, frigid, freezing cold. And then like a day after that, out on the ocean again with rain and then back to snow, just all over the place. It was really fun. But it got me thinking that I haven't done a long road trip in a while. Our last road trip that my wife and I went on together, we did 10 days in Newfoundland with the Ram 1500 and we used the wood stove. That was an incredible series and that playlist is in the playlist section as well. All the videos are there, check that out. Uh, it was a mix of mountain climbing, hiking, tent camping, uh, truck camping, it was a mix of everything. It was just awesome. But I have not done a solo road trip in a long time. So I've been playing with the idea of setting up and doing another road trip because my wife and I have been working very hard on all of our vehicles. We now have the Ram 1500 pickup, which you guys are very familiar with, the wood stove camper in the back. We've got the GMC 1500 with a rooftop tent set up with a diesel heater. You guys are very familiar with that as well. The new addition is the camper van. 
uh, which has a wood stove and a diesel heater inside of it. It's just been lifted and it's getting squared away. So I'm gonna be painting that and doing a whole bunch of things as we roll into spring and summer just to finalize it. But I do still have the bus as well. So we've got four adventure vehicles at our disposal and I don't know what I want to do for an extended trip. I'm thinking a seven day trip solo by myself around the island. Um, I don't I don't know, it, it, it's tricky because I did the Ram last time, but the Ram's very capable and it's pull in and you're already ready to camp. You just drop the tailgate, jump in, wood stove. The GMC is fun, it's very capable as well. They're both six inch lifted trucks, I should say. So they have both six inch suspension and then a body lift. So both trucks are sitting 10 inch suspension. The GMC is on 37 inch BF Goodrich crawlers and the Ram is now on 40 inch BFG Goodrich crawlers. So very big trucks. They're both very, very capable. Um, but the GMC has the rooftop tent set up, which is awesome. I love it. It does take some time to set up. So if I'm gonna be camping in seven days of really cold ice and rain, it might be a little tricky to set it up. Um, pulling into spots sometimes, like just with the Ram, can be a little boring because it's just drop the tailgate, boof, there you are. Uh, and the same thing with the van. You pull in, the van's ready to go, but the van is kind of interesting because it's kind of an indoor-outdoor because I have an awning and you know it's kind of indoor and you can cook outdoor, so it's kind of both. The Ram's mainly indoor. Uh, and the GMC is mainly outdoor, so it's a rooftop tent setup. Um, the bus, I still have the bus, and it is done. It's just, it's winter time, and it can't go anywhere, realistically. I mean, the ground clearance is next to nothing, so that's more of a, a, a kind of summer vehicle road tripping type thing in the fall and whatnot. But where I'm going with this is I would love to hear what you guys have to say about what vehicle I should take. If I do a seven-day road trip here on the island, I'm thinking February or March head out seven days, uh, overland style, camp wherever I want, pull into wherever I want. Um, what vehicle should I take? Because I've been using the Ram. We just used the Ram in Newfoundland. We did a 10 day trip there. All the videos are on the channel. Uh, we've been using the Ram lately and we've been using the GMC a lot lately with the rooftop tent. The van is new to the channel. I haven't really stretched its legs a whole lot uh, and I, I'm going to, but it's limited because it's only two wheel drive but it's a very, very strong contending two wheel drive vehicle. That thing just moves. It doesn't get stuck, honestly. Um, and I have winches for all the vehicles now. I got a removable rear hitch, so it just slides into the trailer hitch. And I'm gonna be getting brackets for the front of all the vehicles. The reason I'm doing it that way is because I have one 15,000 pound winch. I just take it off, put it in the back seat of whatever vehicle I'm using that day. And if I wanna put it on the back to winch backwards, I just slide it in and put the pin. Or if I wanna put it in the front, put it on the front, slide it in, put the pin in, and off I go. So one winch that stays in the vehicle and it can go on the front or rear of all the vehicles is gonna be the plan. So that's a lot to say. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think I should do? Should I take the Ram, the GMC? Uh, the bus is kind of out of the question. Um, or the van? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think because I'm planning a big trip and I'd love to bring you guys into the decision-making process. And uh, I think that'll be really fun and a challenge as well. So that's where my mind's at right now. Uh, Boomer is itching to go play with some sticks out there. I see him eyeballing a piece of firewood he keeps trying to go and grab. Uh, coffee is just about cold, so I should probably down that. There's a little bit of steam coming off it. Um, I just wanted to bring you guys into that process. So yeah, I'm going to finish my coffee and then I'm gonna start the pack up process, guys.
All right, everybody, we've got everything packed away inside of the backpack and it's just about ready to hit the trail. One thing I will mention for getting pegs out of frozen ground, because it is freezing cold, this ground is very hard. My personal trick is round tent pegs. So here I have some titanium, just plain round titanium rod. And these things go in the ground. They come out very easy. The trick is put them in on a very, very steep angle. So if the tent's this way, put them in on a steep angle because when the wind blows, if it pulls the tent, it's not gonna pull the peg out of the ground. It's gonna drive the tent strap or your guy out point into the ground because it's gonna follow the slope of the peg. So put them in really steep. I literally went around the tent with one finger and pulled these out of the ground. I did use a combination of these and Y stakes because I just didn't have enough round pegs. The Y stakes got stuck in the ground. I had to really wiggle and pull those. Those are great for different types of terrain, but for me personally, there are usually three options of pegs. Snow stakes, which work really, really great in snow, but they will freeze in the ground and get stuck. Y stakes, they work really great. They will freeze and get stuck. Or round pegs, which will come out if it's really windy. You just gotta put them in on a steep angle and make sure your tent is tight. Totally fine, works for me. So everything in this adventure went really, really well. Had a great time. Nice and simple tent set up, no wood stove, just the sleeping pad, sleeping bag, everything really well. A warm boomer keeping me warm all night and uh, really had a great time. So that sun is beating on my face and uh, it's time to hit the trail guys. So definitely check out in the description. I'll add the links to the playlist for the overland trip to Newfoundland and here on the island. And definitely let me know what you guys think as far as the overland trip, a seven day extended solo trip coming up, how I should do it, maybe some of the things I should incorporate. So that's everything I got for you. Peace out and I'll see you in the next video.